Okay, folks. First, before we go and study many data structures, we'll study lots of data structures. We'll study data structures like arrays. We'll study data structures like linked lists, right? We'll study data structures like trees, right? We'll study data structures like graphs. We'll study all of them in the rest of the course, right? But before we go there, let's understand what is a data structure first. So the big question is, what is a data structure and why do we need it? Right? That's, that, that's an important question to understand, right? So if you go to Wikipedia, which is, a, which is a very trusted source for this. So I'm on the Wikipedia page for data structures, right? So what Wikipedia says a data structure is, I'll explain this, don't worry about it, right? So Wikipedia says, more precisely, a data structure is a collection of data values. It's basically a collection of data some relationships amongst the data and functions or operations that can be applied on data. These are the three parts. Don't worry if you don't understand what this means. I'll give you an example, very simple example through which you'll be able to understand this very clearly, right? So basically a data structure in a nutshell, if you want to think about, is basically some data, right? Some relationships, some relationship, some relationships between the data, the, the various parts of the data, right? And some operations that you can perform, some operations that you can perform on the data. So let's take a very simple example so as to so as to understand this concretely instead of theoretically, right? We all know arrays, right? We all know what an array is, right? We often represent an array like this, right? Where again, from programming language to programming language, this could differ. So for example, this is an array of size, uh, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is an array of eight elements. Again, indexing could differ from language to language. Like for example, if you're talking about C, C++ or Java, this is given index zero instead of index one, right? So the indices of the array start from zero up to N minus one, if N is the size of the array, right? But in array, there are a couple of interesting properties. Number one is array basically is a collection Array basically is a collection of, of data of same type, collection of items of same type, collection of items of same data type, same data type. That's important, right? Because for example, imagine, imagine um, in a C programming language, let's say when I say int C10, right? What am I doing here? I am creating an array named C, which can hold up to 10 elements, but each of the elements of this array C are of the same data type int, right? So array basically is a collection of items of same data type, okay? So we understood the first part, which is the collection of some. So if you see this, it's basically a collection of data values, right? So some data takes very nice. What is the second property? That there has to be some relationships amongst the data. If you look at an array, one element comes before an element. So there is a sort of ordering. There is a sort of, there is, there is a concept of ordering of data elements, ordering of data elements, because you have ordered them in some fashion here. There is this concept that suppose let's assume there is a number six here. There is a number eight here. There is a number two here, number five here in the array. You can say that this element eight occurs before this element too. So there is a specific order in which you are arranging them, right? So th the relationship, the relationship that data structure contains in the case of array is a simple ordering of these elements, right? Very, very simple, nothing fancy. What about operations? Let's look at what, what are these operations that you can perform? If you think about an array, there are multiple operations that you can perform. We can set any value. For example, if you think about it, you can set a value. Suppose if I want to set a five to let's say 10, right? I can set a value of 10 at index five, right? So you can set a value in the, within the array and you can get a value also. Suppose if I want to say, okay, some variable X is equal to a two, right? If I say this, what does this mean? Now, a2 is nothing but 8. So x will become equal to 8. So set and get are two operations to set a value within the array at a given index. 
right? Get is basically to obtain a value at a given index. So set and get are very two very important operations. Similar to set and get, there are many operations that you can perform. You can traverse. You can traverse your array. What does traversal mean? You can have a simple for loop. You can have a simple for loop. For i equals to, let's say you can write this like this. You can simply say for i equals to 1 to n, right? You can go, you can obtain each of these elements. You can take the first element, then you can obtain the second element, then the third element, fourth element, fifth element, so on till the nth element, right? That is called the traversal of an array. Of course, with when, when you're traversing an array, you're using the set and get operations, obviously, right? So set and get are the most fundamental ones. Traverse is an operation through which you can go through each of these elements within the order if you want. You can also index an array the way you want, right? I can jump and get any value that I want, right? In my set and get, I can directly go to the seventh element and see what the seventh element is. To see the seventh element, I don't have to go through each of these elements. I can directly jump to the seventh element and see. So which means I can index the array, right? I can directly jump and obtain whatever I want. I can search my array also. Suppose if I want to search if a value of 12 is present in my array or not, I can easily simply traverse one item after another item and check if these items, I can get these items using the get operation. Right? I can get this item and I can compare it with 12. So all these operations on the arrays, all these operations are built on set and get. But nonetheless, all these are operations that I can perform on my array. So going back to the Wikipedia definition of what a data structure is, data structure is a collection of data elements. Yes, array is a collection of eight items of the same data type. There, there is a relationship which, because there is a defined ordering of this data because you have these indices for the array elements and a bunch of operations, right? Say so array is the simplest data structure that we all learn in basic programming. And it's something that we use extensively. If you recall, you must have used arrays like tons and tons of time, right? So array is the simplest data structure. We learn more complex data structures, pros and cons of each of these data structures, etc. In a nutshell, we understood what a data structure is, but why do we need a data structure? The next question is, why do we need a data structure? Important question. Because data structures, different data structures have different pros and cons. We'll learn them as you progress. You'll be able to appreciate the answer to why as we progress through various data structures. But in a nutshell, the data structure helps us organize data in a specific format, which is suitable to the problem that we want to solve. Okay, for example, let, let me give an example. If you if, if you have data about uh, cities, right? Let's assume this is city one, this is city two, right? This is city one, this is city two, city three. Suppose you have, suppose you're working at Google Maps, let's say, right? A very simplified example. Suppose you have this distance between every two cities. Let's say the distance between these two cities is 100 kilometers. The distance between these two cities is 52 kilometers. Suppose you have this data like this, some city four, Right? Each of these, each of these nodes, these are called nodes, right? Each of these dots represent a city. Each of these edges or each of these connections here represent your road from the city to the city or a highway from the city to the city. And this represents how much distance there is. Suppose if, if your date, if you're trying to solve a problem on this, for example, you want to find the shortest, suppose you want to find the shortest route or the shortest path from let's say city one to city four, right? In such a case, in such a case, how do you store your data efficiently? You have all this information. You have all of this data that there are four cities. There are these roads. This is the length of each of the road, right? Right. You have all of this information. You want to store this data somewhere very efficiently so that you can find the shortest path very effectively. To do that, you will come up with a specialized data structure. So there is a specialized data structure called a graph data structure, which will help us store this information very efficiently so that you can solve real world problems like finding the shortest path, right? Things like Google Maps, right? Google, I mean, Google Maps typically stores a huge graph of many, 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 many locations, right? 
Because when you, when, you, when you go to Google Maps and say, I want a direction from so-and-so place to so-and-so place, Google Map has to store all of this information somewhere to be able to tell you that go this way and this is the fastest route, right? So in a nutshell, the need, why do we need data structures? Because data structures give us efficient ways of storing information, right? Like for example, in this case, the most efficient way to store information is using a graph data structure so that I can solve real world problems that I care about, like finding the shortest path from one location to other location, much more effectively using this data structure, right? So data structures are at the very, very core of all of computing, right? I hope, I hope you got an idea of this. Again, if you want to think of the simplest data structure, we all know arrays anyway. Any, every programming language, whether you learned C, C++, Java, Python, JavaScript, any language has most modern languages, I should say, have some form of arrays and you must have learned it in programming, right? So we will learn many more advanced types of data structures as we go through it. And I'll give you context on where each of these data structures is useful, right? And why, why are we even coming up with these new data structures? Right? So we learn that slowly. You cannot get all the answers in, a, in the very first video. We got to be patient. We'll answer all of these questions on why I need a specific data structure. But in a nutshell, we come up with new data structures to solve real world problems more effectively and efficiently. That's the core of it.